Hey guys, it's Obsolete here, back with another video. Today we are going over my death mode escal guide. We are going to cover everything today from the arena setup to the gear to use, what to expect, and general rules of thumb for this crazy boss fight. With that being said, let's get started with the arena setup. So starting out, the death mode arena box is a lot smaller compared to the revengeance mode and lower difficulties box, so you need to make the most out of the space provided to you, as your area to dodge projectiles is significantly reduced in death mode. Thick walls on the sides of your arena will make it so the Giga Blast that we will get into later in the fight will explode right after spawning sometimes, which will give you wider gaps between certain hard to dodge projectiles. Rails are really useful in order to refresh flight time with a hook without having to worry about getting stuck on platforms. The downside to this is if you right click near your player, you may accidentally mount onto them, and you don't want to hit your mount key either. You can also take this a step further and paint the rails black in order to make it so the projectiles in the fight are more visible. You will also want some sort of marker in order to indicate where to stand when you want to summon the boss, and this is also a good place to put some of the buffing candles from the Drunk Princess, Heart Lanterns, or anything else that may be useful to you to give you an edge during the fight. Now if you are lazy like me and don't want to build an arena, you can download the No Hit World linked in the description, and use the Cheat Sheet Paint and Schematic tool in order to copy and paste it into your actual world. Moving on to gear, Auroric Tesla armor is the best armor at this stage in the game, and any items made out of Auroric Tesla bars are going to be great weapons for this fight, such as the Drat, Ark of the Cosmos, and Celestis. The Murasama is also an extremely reliable and fast way for all classes regardless of loadout to take care of the Brimstone Heart phases, so even if you're your class other than melee, it can make the Brimstone Heart phases extremely fast and simple, and I think it's worth having for that reason. The Normality Relocator is a great thing to have as well, functioning as an instant rata discord, but with the downside of making you fall much faster after teleporting, which is not always ideal. For mobility items, the Celestial Tracers or Drew Wings are the best options for the fight, with the Drew Wings providing longer flight time, but Celestial Tracers providing more immunity frames. Other accessories like the Affliction, the Sponge, Core of the Blood God, Dark Sun Ring, and his Guardian Aegis are good to improve survivability, and other stats like health, defense, and movement speed. Damage isn't a huge problem for the most part here, but having things like the Elemental Gauntlet or other class-based accessories are great as well. Defense also isn't useless, but if you do get hit, just know it's going to deal a good chunk of your health. The Cryogen Lore item can be used in order to grant a dash without using an accessory slot, which can be useful for certain setups. For your potions, I highly recommend having the normal buffs you'd use, but the ones that I think are the most valuable here are Profane Rage, Holy Wrath, Draconic Elixir is more of a personal choice as some people like it and some people think it provides too much acceleration, and the best health potion at this point is Omega Healing Potions. Eskal is immune to all debuffs besides Icar and Cursed Inferno, so those can be used for some extra damage. Alright, let's go ahead and get into the actual fight here, so starting out with Phase 1. Upon spawning, she will start a randomized bullet hell where you can't deal any damage to her, with many projectiles going vertically and horizontally at the same time. You want to do your best to dodge what you can here, and it is most ideal to stay at the top of the arena during this part to get a head start on the next phase. I personally like to hug one of the top corners for this part, aim for very simple and calculated movements, don't run around like crazy here. After the bullet hell ends, the next phase changes things up. The first thing you have is 5 brimstone hearts at both of the top corners of the arena. You want to take these out as soon as possible, as this will allow you to actually start damaging the boss. The second thing is there is a worm that will be shooting projectiles from his segments in 4 directions. Be careful of both the worm's projectiles and Eskal's projectiles during this phase. The worm doesn't deal any contact damage, but it is advised to stay away from it so you have more time to dodge the projectiles. The worm can also not be killed directly, it only will disappear after you take out the brimstone hearts, and after taking out the hearts you can also start to damage the boss. Okay, so this is where the fight actually really starts. So Eskel will start to line herself up vertically with you, and track your movement while firing school projectiles at you. Dodging this takes a good amount of practice, but you want to just go slowly up or slowly fall down, controlling the speed of that by tapping or holding the spacebar accordingly. When you get to either the top of the arena or the bottom of the arena, you then need to go within the gap between these projectiles, which can be quite hard to time. One thing I do when I feel like I am not on a good time to swap directions, is to dash in the direction away from the boss, so that it gives you a bit more time to dodge between that gap. After doing this, she will stop attacking for a moment, then fire two Giga Blasts at the player, that try to home in on the player, 
and after a few seconds it will explode into a massive amount of projectiles scattering in all directions. You have two options here, you can try to dodge around the projectiles, or you can use a rod of discord to go inside the circle after it explodes, allowing you to avoid it entirely. Right after she fires the second Giga Blast, she will then charge the player four times, then go back to firing Giga Blast or the Skulls. She will also rarely fire a burst of Brimstone Darts at the player, but this is quite a rare attack. Shortly after those charges, she should go into her next sub phase at 75% HP. Right after that, you have another bullet health phase, but this time she will summon smaller Giga Blasts that explode into fewer projectiles and home in on the player during it. These small Giga Blasts will appear in all other bullet phases after this one. After the bullet health phase, the fight stays relatively the same. The only major change is that she will do two charges in the row instead of four. This phase ends at 50%. At 50%, another bullet phase begins. This time, instead of the smaller Giga Blasts, the larger ones are fired. This bullet hell is significantly harder than the last ones, and you want to be really careful here, as the large Giga Blasts are very dangerous. After this phase, you can then damage the boss again, and you will see the larger ones in all bullet phases after this one. At 45%, the boss can't be damaged once again, and she will summon her brothers to assist her. They will maintain a set distance on the left and the right of the player. The one on the right will fire Brimstone Flame Schools that bob up and down, and the one on the left will fire the same schools as Escal, but at a much slower rate. I highly recommend focusing on the one on the right, as his projectiles are more annoying and hard to dodge. After defeating the one on the right, this is the perfect time to regen, refresh or revive, get rid of potion sickness, or just to catch your breath a bit. The remaining brother will start to fire a bit more rapidly, but it's manageable. After both brothers are defeated, you can then damage the boss again. At 40% HP, there will be much more Giga Blast spawning, so just watch your step, this is when the second phase of the fight starts. At 30% HP, another bullet health phase will spawn, but four brimstone monsters or moons will spawn and follow the player. At this point, you will then need to move in either a clockwise or counterclockwise movement in order to keep them off of you. These monsters will continue to follow you for the rest of the fight, so you have to manage both Ascal's attacks and the monsters at the same time. At 20% HP, Ascal will summon 20 soul seekers around herself while being immune to damage, and they will fire a volley of darts at the player on a timer all at once. After killing them, you can then damage the boss once again. At 10% HP, the final bullet phase begins, which will have every projectile introduced so far, with the addition to the brimstone flame skulls that the brother on the right shot at you previously, the same ones that bob up and down. The final phase at 8% HP, the brimstone hearts and the worm will appear once again. You want to take out the hearts as soon as possible while being careful of the moons and other projectiles. After getting rid of all the hearts, you can then damage the boss again, and nothing really changes here, just avoid the moons and damage the boss. At 1% health, the boss will stop moving and firing projectiles and cannot be damaged. During this, some lingering projectiles can still hit you, so still be careful here. Finally, after a bit of dialogue from the boss, you can then finish her off and the long fight is over. Moving on to final tips and general advice. The top of the arena is a great position to be in within the first three bullet hells, and top right is an even better position to be within them. From the fourth bullet hell and onward, you will want to use a clockwise or counterclockwise movement depending on your current movement, and you only want to change directions if you absolutely have to. This is to avoid the brimstone monsters or moons. After she finishes a bullet health phase, try to be near her if possible. Sometimes she can get a cheap shot on you if she quickly lines herself up with you vertically, making for a hard to dodge and unexpected diagonal school projectile. There are certain sound cues you can use when the music changes to tell when a bullet health phase will end, so I highly recommend having music on for this reason, along with normal sound as you can hear when the Giga Blasts explode, which allows you to know if it exploded even if it's off screen. You do not absolutely need a dash accessory for this boss fight, and sometimes I have found that having a dash is more harmful than not having one, as it may cause you to overcorrect in panic dash, which may lead you to take more hits than normal. The Draydon update added a new item called the Ball and Chain, which when favorited in your inventory, will prevent you from dashing even if you have a dash accessory, so you can still get the benefits of the accessory without worrying about dashing. The last 30% of the fight is the hardest part, and can easily cause you to panic if you get too nervous. Try your best to keep calm as it's the most hectic portion of the fight, and avoid dash spamming or moving too much, as it's likely that you will get hit multiple times for doing so. Lastly, and what I think is the most important tip of all, is that this fight can and will break you if you let it. 
spamming attempts can only get you so far at times, so if you find yourself becoming frustrated with this fight, taking a break for a few hours or days and then coming back to it with a more fresh and calm mind will usually benefit you. This has worked for me and sometimes after a break the fight becomes much more clear in my head and that part that I was previously dying on is no longer a problem anymore and sometimes it only takes a few attempts after a break in order for me to even no hit a boss that gave me trouble previously. And that's all for my SCO guide. If it was useful make sure to leave a like and also subscribe if you're new to the channel and comment any of your thoughts down below. Thank you guys for watching.